the things we do today to get these little tires to go fast. <laughs> it can be overwhelming if you don't know what it is, but hopefully after you watch this video, you'll have a much better understanding of what we're doing so that you can do them yourself. Before I get into the nitty gritty details of how I do these things, I thought I'd take a moment to break down why we do these things in case you didn't know. See these two tires? This one has less tread than this one. Pop quiz time. Which one would typically have more grip at an indoor dirt track these days? Well, if you chose the one with the full amount of tread, I would understand why you would choose that one because it's new, hasn't been run yet, should be a great tire. Well, you would be mistaken in most scenarios. The tire with less tread usually develops more grip. So today I'm gonna to show you how to get to this point and then what I would do to generate even more grip using things like tire sauce and tire warmers together or not. Now I can hear you guys already in the comment section. Back in my day, all we did was mount them up and run it in the fluff and it was great. I understand. Super fun. I've raced in those scenarios before in the past. Even in recent days, I've raced in those scenarios. Pin tires, super simple, mount them up, go. Indoor racing, it's very different. So I'm here to help and educate everyone that I possibly can. Because I hate it when things feel like speed secrets and nobody's really telling you how to do it. I'd much rather everybody know how to do it so that we can all learn and go fast and not be frustrated. So in a moment, I'm gonna show you how I use this sanding paddle with this drill and grind down some tires. I'll also show you something that I do to the insert. If you're looking to flatten out the shape of the tire and produce even just a little bit more grip. All of these methods are going to be a little bit subjective and it's going to be dependent on what you like and what the track is calling for. Take everything I'm saying as kind of like a general starting point and then tweak it to what's going to be appropriate for your car, your tires, your track. Diving into the tools that we're gonna be using today. I've got the trusty Milwaukee drill, but I wanted to give a huge shout out to the guys over at Pilot RC for sending me this super awesome tire drill chuck mount. Don't know what it's called, but I've linked it down below where you can get one. Really nice. This thing has a machined aluminum, uh, kind of like thumb screw, so that way you don't need to bring your wrench with you when you're outside grinding tires down. And it's really nice because it has two hexes. So if you found yourself in a situation where you need to do some crazy stuff to some eight scale tires, it has the hex on there for you. But most of us are gonna be using the 12 mil hex for our 10 scale stuff, so this thing is awesome. Link down below. My tool of choice to remove rubber when I feel like there's too much on a tire. It's just gonna be a very flexible kind of like putty knife. Got it for a couple dollars at a hardware store. And then I glued with some super glue, some 80 grit sandpaper to both sides. In the past, I used a solid aluminum sanding stick with similar grit sandpaper. But what I've found recently is if I'm working with a tire where the foam isn't fully set right or there's something about the rubber where it's just not perfectly round, the solid aluminum stick would kind of create hot spots and it would slick out areas that I didn't want slicked out and leave other areas not like that. So the tread pattern all the way around the tire was very inconsistent. Didn't happen all the time, but from time to time it did. When I use something that was flexible and it can kind of ride on top of the surface of the tire and contour to its shape, to an extent, I found it to be much more consistent and I had fewer hot spots over the span of several sets of tires. Highly recommend you make one of these really easy. Don't really need to make a whole video on it. Just find a putty knife that's flexible, that's wide enough to fit the carcass of a tire, 80 grit sandpaper, done. One thing that I'll be showing you guys as kind of like a bonus tip is how to do a Zeke mod, or it's kind of like a variation of the V-cut to an insert, using this cool little tool from the Team Rattlecan guys. 
They sent me this tool a while back and I've been using it for quite some time and I absolutely love it. It's pretty tedious to sit there with a pair of scissors and cut out each rib and then to hope that you're doing each one the same, I know I'm not that talented, can be a challenge. So when you take an insert, flip it inside out on a rim like this, mount it up on the drill and just spin it over, I'll show you guys in a minute. It's super easy, very consistent, I highly recommend it. In the past, I showed you guys how to generate some heat through a tire with a microfiber towel and some sauce and basically friction when spinning it over on a drill, and it works. I'm not gonna say it doesn't. However, all the smoke and the mess, I just really started to hate it and I didn't like it at all. It became very tiresome and gave me headaches. I just couldn't stand it anymore. If it works for you and you don't mind it, that's fine. Keep doing it, there's really nothing wrong with it. However, what I do now is I use a tire warmer with a set of tire wraps, bands. I don't know what you'd really call these. I link down below some stuff that you can get that's a newer version of this one, because this is an old one, I don't think they sell it anymore, but it'll do the same thing that this one does, and the tire bands that will fit on these 10 scale uh, off-road tires. A lot of the tire warmers out there come with uh, ones for on-road tires, and those are too small. So you have to get these in order to fit those tires. The only other thing that we'll be talking about today is tire sauce. Still kind of like my ultimate go-to is going to be the FDJ green tire sauce. However, some days my sinuses are just not up to the challenge and I start to get a little bit of a headache and the fume, the odor that comes from a lot of the tire sauces out there, not just this stuff, can really agitate it and give me the worst kind of migraines. So an alternative that I try sometimes when I'm not needing max levels of grip is this TDK 2.0 odorless tire sauce. This seems to be most comparable to like the yellow liquid wrench formula, but in a better way, it doesn't have that super greasy like first minute or so that I tend to experience with liquid wrench. This stuff just works really great from the initial hot laps and throughout the run. It's very consistent. I've been through a couple bottles of this now and it just does a huge help when I'm experiencing some issues with headaches or sinuses that these odors are just not helping. Great options. This is my ultimate choice. TDK 2.0 odorless is kind of like my backup go-to for most club race days. Enough gabbing, went through all the stuff that we're gonna use today. So let's go ahead and jump outside and start grinding a tire down. Okay, time to grind this tire down. Now. This is obviously already mounted up, not gonna show you how to mount a tire, but if you notice, we have an arrow. This is important, and you want it to be pointing in the direction that the tire is going to rotate, because we always run the tire in the same direction. You never wanna flip a tire around because it just handles like garbage. <laughs> I know, I've done it by accident, it's awful. So once you know which direction the tire is going to go, you have your arrow on there. Let's go ahead and put it on the drill. Okay, and then make sure that the drill is rotating in the direction of the arrow. So here's just look at it one more time. So here's my arrow. We're going in the right direction. Now we will turn it a little bit in the opposite direction. I'll show you in a second, but our primary focus is to grind it down in this direction. So if it's rotating towards me, I like to put the paddle underneath it. This way I'm not fighting it. If you try to do it up here, it's always gonna be pushing the paddle away from you. Where if you put it down here, it's gonna be nice and easy to hold on to. Now, what we're trying to do is get the center of this tire down possibly a little bit lower than the outside edges. That's gonna be a good place to start. Now, we'll rotate it in the opposite direction, but just a little bit to knock off the fuzzy edges. Mm 
Then again. Now after my initial layer of grinding, I like to clean it up with this little scotch brite pad so that I can see the height of the tread a little bit more accurately. And do a little bit in reverse. Okay. So now let's take a look. That's actually looking just about perfect. We have a little bit of tread left in the middle and we have a little bit more left on the outer edges. So this is gonna be a great starting place for us to get our sauce cycle going. This is a process that you definitely don't wanna rush. If it takes you more than the time that it took me to get to this point, that's okay. There's nothing right or wrong here. Something to note is that it's always easy to take more tread off. It's kind of impossible to put tread back on. So go slow, hit your mark wherever you're trying to go for, and just take your time. Guys, tire dust isn't that big of a deal. You can blow it off, brush it off. Hmm. Easy to get rid of it. Okay, I wanted to show you one more trick before we leave our grinding station here. This is a super fast, cool way to put the V-cut or the Zeke cut into your foam. I've made a video in the past showing how to remove material from the center area of these ribs. Well, with the scissors, it's really easy to not do it absolutely perfect every single cut, and it could technically be pretty inconsistent. However, using this little grinding stick, this can be so unbelievably quick and perfect every single time. So, rotating towards me, kind of set it right in the middle. Depending on the angle. Then rotate it the other way a little bit. Ta-da! So yeah, maybe a little bit messier depending on where you do it, but super fast and way more accurate and consistent doing it this way versus the scissors. So super cool, highly recommend it if you're going to be V cutting or Zeke modding your inserts. Pretty cool. All right, boys and girls. So trying to do this from like the perspective of what you would see if you were doing it at home. So we have our tire warmer. It's set to 170. It's hooked up to a 85 amp power supply. Most of you that have eye chargers, you can just go ahead and use that. It's plugged in with some banana plugs. And then we have our tire bands or tire wraps ready to go. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just going to go ahead and evenly apply some tire sauce to our ground down tires. So let's go ahead and do that. I like to squeeze most of it off so I'm not wasting anything. One thing that's really easy to do is take your wheel wrench, kind of go around the tire. I kind of get like the middle portion there nice and covered and then grab tire brush and gently scrub it across the face of the tire. Okay. Looks good there. Take the tire warmer, get it tightly around there so that there isn't a bunch of air gap. Make sure it's lined up, good to go. 
and then you just do all four corners. Now, what I would suggest is that you go ahead and start with a five minute application of the sauce baking method. What I've personally done and made the mistake of in the past is done like a 10 minute session to start with a sauce that's a little bit too aggressive and I immediately blow out the rubber and it's kind of already falling apart. It's wearing out too fast and the foam isn't broken down yet and it kind of just ruins the whole tire prepping method. So I kind of slow and steady do this process. Five minutes with sauce on there. When it's ready, just go ahead and take it off and run it on the track. I know it looks a little bit ridiculous tire warmers on a 10 scale dirt car. What the heck is going on? All we're doing is we're softening up that rubber and helping the tire and the foam just start to break in and generate more grip. Now I said at the beginning of this video, there may be variances to these methods that I'm doing that would be appropriate for your particular track, your car, your tire, etc. After I do this initial grinding down, sauce, and warm, I'll probably run the tire at least once or twice for it to be broken in. It may take longer than that, it may take four or five runs, depending on things like temperature, abrasiveness on the track, etc. As a general rule of thumb, I like to get a run or two with this saucing cycle. After I've gotten the break in done, I kind of evaluate where the tire is at. Does it need to continue to receive heat and sauce, or does it just need to get sauce and no heat? Sometimes that's the answer. Sometimes it's heat and sauce every time. Like I said, subjective to what your particular scenario is. How do you know when you've used too much heat and too much sauce? The telltale sign for me is when you start to develop a air gap where you start to feel literally nothing between the rubber and the foam. You can kind of touch it and you can feel it depress and it just has nothing there. When that starts to happen and you get a lot of it, typically speaking, that's going to start to be very inconsistent and the tire will do unpredictable things. So I like to keep that to a minimum as much as possible. As the tire continues to stretch out and the foam breaks down, obviously this is going to happen to some extent. But I like to keep that from happening as long as possible, if possible. Is there a benefit to doing it this way versus with the drill method and the microfiber towel and smoking the sauce into the tire. As far as out on the track, it can be pretty much the same as what I've seen when it's done properly in both methods. The major gain to doing it this way is there's no tire smoke and I don't get my hands covered in dirty, greasy nastiness. So for me, just the cleanliness factor alone is worth it. On top of that, I know that breathing in smoke and fumes is definitely not the most ideal thing to do to your body. So that is also a huge net gain, in my opinion, doing it with the tire warmer method. Downside is that it's obviously going to be a little bit more of an upfront cost to it. I'm not exactly sure on the price of these things because I bought them so long ago, but it is going to be more than just a microfiber towel, obviously. So if cost is a huge factor, maybe the microfiber towel and the drill method is for you. But if cost isn't as much of an issue, this is going to be the way to go. Oh yeah. <laughs> These puppies are ready to go. Ready to go to the track. There is no track. Now I'm sad. <laughs> These tires feel so good. Oh yeah, they got that nice, like, soft. You can feel the tackiness going on. Oh yeah, that's a hot lap waiting to happen right there. <laughs> After you go run your car on the track, is there anything else that I do once the tire is dirty? And the answer to that question is, Yes, I do. And there's actually a couple different options that I wanted to show you guys. Now, after you run the tires, I like to clean them. 
I have two methods that I use to clean tires. One is for those that don't mind getting their hands dirty, and the other is for a little bit more hands-free approach, which some of you may like. Um, huge shout out before I jump into it, uh, Charlie Carter from Pitted RC. He sent me this little pitted saucy washer station, and it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna show you how this works in a second for the hands-free method. Okay, so now we're going to do the hands-free or the minimal tire contact cleaning method using the saucy washer, our drill with a seven mil nut driver and leaving the tire on the car. So we want to make sure that we rotate this in a direction that will be tightening the wheel nut because there's gonna be a little bit of friction applied between the tire and the brush. So kind of dip it a little bit into the simple green Rotate it around slowly in the sauce or the uh, soapy bath. I'm actually going to flip my drill into a slow speed so that I don't fling all of the simple green everywhere. Give it a couple of good rotations like so. Bring your towel into the picture. Kind of wipe it off. And our tire is nice and clean. So it does a really great job and I didn't have to touch the tire too much to get it to be nice and clean again. Well, another method that I like to do is a little bit messier, a little bit more hands-on, and it's to use this uh, sprayway glass cleaner, the foaming kind. I don't know if there's a non-foaming kind or not, but just thought I'd articulate that point. This one is pretty cool. I like to go ahead and just give it a good spray all the way around and then I kind of work it with my hand. This stuff isn't too aggressive as far as like drying out my hands. I've used it for many race days and just kind of wipe it down, wipe it down, wipe it down. With the towel, work it around, clean all the dirt off and then you're good to go. So this method, obviously the downside is that your hands are going to come in direct contact with the dirt and the cleaner. And if you have sensitive or dry hands, this may not be the way to go. You might wanna go the other route. But just thought that I would show you guys that this is my usual way of cleaning my tires between rounds. So there you have it. Rundown, breakdown of my methods for getting these tires to generate some more grip. As a quick recap, start with the V-cutting the insert before you mount up the tire, should it be necessary. Once it's mounted up, cut down that tread just to the appropriate height. Use my height as a reference and kind of tweak it from there, whatever is going to be appropriate for your particular track. Once you get everything ground down, mounted up on the car, go ahead and sauce up those tires. Do that five minute bake period with your tire sauce of choice, and then get at least a run or two on them before you use them for a qualifier or a main. Typically speaking, you're going to want to get these tires broken in, and it's a process. It may take several runs before the tire starts to develop that race pace that everybody is looking for. Once you get the tire ready, it's broken in, then you're ready to get out there and turn the hot laps of the day. <laughs> but be patient, it may take some time, it may take a little bit longer than you're expecting, or it may happen a lot faster. Just be aware of what's going on with the tire, try not to develop too much tire gap, or just absolutely obliterate the rubber altogether, and adjust accordingly. 
So before I wrap this video up, it's time to jump in and say thank you to all of my wonderful Patreon subscribers. You guys know who you are. Thank you everyone that is up on the screen right at this very moment. You guys are all wonderful. I appreciate your support. Mr. Alex Johnson, thank you for your generous support as always. Mr. Tim Jeskowitz, thank you for your support. Apologies if I butchered your name once again. <laughs> and Mr. Brad Persons, Thank you, sir. I greatly appreciate your support. For those interested in joining my Patreon, the link is down below. If you guys had any questions about the tire prep stuff that we went over today, be more than happy to try and help you out down the comment section below as always. If you have particular questions about your track and what tire is going to work there, I'm going to kind of go ahead and jump in and answer that question now with the best answer is to talk to or watch the local fast guys at your track because odds are I haven't raced at that track so I might be completely off base or wrong when it comes to a tire suggestion. So reach out to your local track, talk to the fast guys and see what tires they're on and check out their tire prep method. You might learn a thing or two. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for your continued support. I look forward to seeing each and every one of your lovely faces in my next video. Peace. I left these tire warmers on the whole time. They're hot. Duh. It's 170 degrees. It says so on the LCD screen.